We're going to sew a fabric face mask out of two rectangles. So you have an outer ply and an inner ply. You want to make sure they're two different fabrics so you can see which side is the outside, which side is the inside. You want half of a pipe cleaner and you want two thin hair ties. We're going to start sewing along the top edge, right sides together. You could go half an inch for a seam allowance along the top so that you have extra room for your nose wire, which is the pipe cleaner. There you go, and you want to just fold it in half so you can figure out where your halfway point is. You have your pipe cleaner. If you want to go ahead and tuck the sharp edge in and just twist a little bit around it just to protect yourself. Do that on both sides, so tuck that sharp edge in, twist around it. Now you have pipe cleaner that's not going to hurt to you. Fold that in half too so you can see where you need to start your sewing. Because right now we're just going to encase we're gonna make a little box to encase our pipe cleaner, or you could also use a twist tie from a bag of bread or the produce section of the grocery store has those twist ties too. So we're just gonna start making the little box. If you could see the little box. start sewing it make sure your needles down straighten the twist tie back out or the pipe cleaner and tuck it in and now you're going to complete the box around it you don't want to sew over it because it might break your needle or break your thread Trim your threads. Check and make sure you got the box all the way through, both layers on the front and the back. And we did, so there's our box. It has our pipe cleaner inside. Now we are just going to understitch the lining to, or the seam allowance to the lining just to hold it in so we don't have to go iron it. You go pretty far away so that you make room for the wire and you don't hit it with your needle. You don't have to go all the way to both edges so that it makes it easier to sew up the sides. Again, trim off all your threads. So now I'm gonna sew up my side seam. And I'm going to go, because I don't have a serger and or a home machine where I could do a zigzag, which if, in which case if you did, you would just sew the top and the bottom and then flip it out and then pleat it and then zigzag or overlock and turn it over. But now I'm going to finish this completely so that I can turn it out without any raw edge exposed. And you could go ahead and stop about three eighths of an inch away from the bottom and just start sewing up the bottom. You wanna leave about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere along the middle so that you can flip it inside, right side out. Turn it and switch off the other side. Go ahead and trim up your corners so that you get a nice neat turnout. Trim up all of your extra threads. Go ahead and flip that out. Once we flip it out and turn all of our corners out, we are going to pleat it and then add in the elastics and finish the bottom edge. So you could use a pencil, a screwdriver, anything to kind of punch these corners out. If you use scissors, you could poke it all the way through. So just be careful.
Everything's turned out nice. Now we have our little hole opening that we need to go back over. And what you could do too, you could either just top stitch just the part that's open, or you can go ahead and top stitch all the way along the bottom edge just for some uniformity. This isn't all the way turned out, so I'm just gonna quickly get that out. I'm just gonna top stitch all the way along the bottom. You can just go 16 inch away. Once you get to your opening, make sure it's all tucked under. That seam allowance is tucked under. It's closed. Now you have your nice little rectangle. And we are just going to beat it now. And then add in the hair ties and you are done. So you want the finished length to be around three inches. So you could go ahead and use the ruler on your machine or you could mark out your notches on the pattern. Just eyeball it to have it even out a little bit. And you just kind of want to tack those in place so that you can turn it and add the elastic. So do the same thing to the other side and match it up to make sure you're even on both sides. You could kind of flip it over halfway and make sure that's nice and even like this needs to get adjusted. I'm just one needling that without bar tacking just because it's essentially a basting stitch and we're going to switch it we're going to turn it back with the elastic in there and that will hold it all in place so here's the mask all ready to go i'm going to put the elastic in we are going to turn it back you can see how I did that. Stuck the elastic in there and we're just gonna stitch it down. I'm gonna get close to the elastic but not catching it. Do the same thing on the other side. So thread that through, push it back. Feel like it's easy to start it and then pull the elastic a little bit turn it back just make sure you don't get the presser foot stuck on the feet done that a couple times so it through there we go 10 minutes start to finish quick easy way to get a fabric mask there you go. Send me all your feedback if you have any easier tips on how to do anything. That'd be awesome. Thanks.